Quiet. So I told him what I thought. And it's written Miss Bondo on me card, so I'll get no dull money. You have to go before a court of referees if they do that. <laughs> what will my mother say? You'll get back to your work. We'll deal with him. Arnie, you'll take your one out at way. Jackie. Hey, Mrs. Dillon said you wanted a word. Suppose you'll be wanting another day off. Well, what is it this time? A wedding? I'm not much of a one for weddings. I prefer a decent funeral. I am the chairman of this court of referees, and we're here this morning to hear a case of industrial misconduct. Aye. Miss Skelton has reported to us that on the morning of the 29th of March, she delivered some books to your office and that you interfered with her. And when she refused to play your mucky little game, you threatened her with sack and gave her cards. Is this right? Certainly not. That lass is a bad timekeeper. I've oh, warned her several no. times already. No, and this warning's usually mean a black mark on your bum. Yeah. Yeah. She were very cheeky this morning, so I give her a card. Oh. And marked her misconduct so she couldn't get no dole. I find you guilty of being a dirty old bleeder. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Get off, get it, get it, get it. Tom Dick and Harry are here. For Mary, do you know? <laughs> He's from this property company it's bought up firm. Oh, not another one. I've worked for four different firms in the last few years. I never even changed my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we take over bids and amalgamations and buying each other out. You don't know who you're working for half the time, do you? <laughs> well, we're lucky to be here at all. 
Most little firms have gone now and big ones are going and all. With stainless steel, you can't compete with Japan. Aye, ah, Gaffer was saying he can import a ton of Finnish cutlery cheaper than he can buy a ton of raw steel in Sheffield. What they're after is London shops and showrooms. They're worth a fortune now. Firm is an added bonus. Or maybe it's not. I think they'll close it down. So we best start looking for other jobs. Might be an idea. Piece of cake, Flo. Ain't it beautiful that teapot from Baxter's? Oh, well, you got one we retired first time with a smarmy letter, wasn't it? I enjoyed working there. It's not been the same since old Mr. Baxter died. It's any kind of boss at all, really. All they were interested in were making things. They weren't bothered about money side. Do you know, he had me doing gold plating with a saucepan and a bit of flannel tied round wooden spoon. Never. <laughs> Young David's had a hard time trying to get things sorted out since his dad died. But he seems to be getting things turned round now. At least he's taken on a few young uns. You had a young lass working with you, didn't you? Aye. Teresa. She's a nice lass. Have you heard Alterini? Oh, she's very low, I think. Can't get used to living on her own. Never had to. Now, when Ron died, it were a relief, really, because he had that much pain and I soon got to manage. But since Annie's gone, she's just got worse and worse. It could be the arthritis, but I think she's just fretting. She's got to have an operation, you know. Oh, Rini. She always seemed to lean on Annie. Then it ended up looking after her. Tis a shame. I see you've heard from your Elizabeth. Mm. Is she coming over this year with the family again? You listen to this. I was thinking, Mum, that instead of us coming over this summer, that you and Flo might come and stay with us. Now you're a lady of leisure. So I'm enclosing air ticket for you both. Us? Oh, go to America? I will about it. It's now or never. <laughs> Why not? America, here we come. <laughs> oh, just think. The other day I was remembering us starting work for seven and six a week. <laughs> Do you remember them little shawls we used to wear? And paying sixpence for a buff brat from that little shop in Solly Street. Oh, we've seen some changes, haven't we? Morning, Mary. Morning, Flo. The leaves of brown came tumbling down, remember, in September, in 
in the rain.